Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how pre-rendering works in Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly applications. Pre-rendering is a way that you can make your applications draw their initial markup as quickly as possible. I'm not going to lie, there are some gotchas involved, but we're going to look at them one by one and discover some ingenious solutions. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blaze the Train! All right, I'm going to start with a Blazor server application because Blazor server applications are pre-rendered by default. And you can tell that because if you go into your pages folder into your underscore host CSHTML file, you can see that the render mode is set to server pre-rendered. That's just the way it comes. But I just want to show you a little quirk with pre-rendering and let's talk about what it is and how it works and all that stuff. But I want to show you the quirk first and then I'll explain why it's happening. All right, I'm going to go to fetch data and I'm going to hit refresh. Now I want you to keep your eye on this guy right here, five. Just watch that as I refresh. Did you see it jump from one number to another one really quickly? Watch again. Again. Right? This time you saw this guy go from a negative number to a positive number, but very, very quickly. Let's do a little experiment. Let's go into the uh, weather forecast service where we're generating this random data. And instead of generating five weather forecasts, let's generate 10. Maybe that will allow you to see it a little more clearly. All right, you have to refresh now. Keep your eye on that 32. You really saw it there, didn't you? And I'm hoping that the video resolution is enough so that people can see that it was one value when it pre-rendered, and then it was another value after everything came online. All right, so now that brings me into what is pre-rendering. Pre-rendering is essentially running code on the server and then shipping that HTML file down to the browser as quickly as possible. And then in the case of Blazor server, it establishes the uh, circuit with signal R and all of that stuff. And then it goes back and gets another rendering and all of the data comes back again, and this time the page is usable. If we had buttons on this page, nothing would happen when you clicked them in between the time that the pre-rendering happened and that the page was reloaded again. So the reason that you're seeing, you're not seeing a flash, if we say go home and then go to fetch data, you don't see a flash there, is because this just pre-rendered, that's it. It did not call again uh, as being commanded by the client, but if I refresh, now it's going to actually load that data twice. Like you really saw it there, minus two and then 10, right? All right, well let's just start right off the bat by fixing this. And we can fix this with a little memory cache. So I'm going to just replace all this code right here in weather forecast service with some code that uses a memory cache. And then what I'm going to do is when I call get forecast async, if I call within one second of the data being uh, generated and cached, I'm going to pull it from the cache. It only lives for one second, but that's enough for Blazor server and for this demo. So you're not gonna see a flash because the first time that uh, the forecast data is loaded, it's going to be uh, pre-rendered. And the second time is gonna be, you know, from inst an instruction from the client, an instruction from the browser. So just to show this happening, let's go to fetch data. And right here, let's add a little uh, system diagnostics um, debug right line uh, 
in it. All right, so all we're saying here is that you can now just take a look at the output and see every time init is called. Here we go. So go to fetch data. Init is called once. That was the pre-rendering happening on the server. But if I click it twice, watch what happens. We have an init, and then we have normalizing Blazor and establishing a WebSocket connection. And then it calls uh, on initialized async again. All right. So the first time it's only being called by the pre-rendering. The second time it gets pre-rendered and then called again from the client. So just to demonstrate how smooth this is, I'm going to take over index and I'm going to move all the code from fetch data into uh, index, uh, including our init message. Now study this carefully and see if you can see anything changing. Not me. That's pretty much instantaneous and there's no flashing, there's no confusion of data. Okay? So now what happens if we turn off pre-rendering and change our render mode to server? Same code, same everything, let's just see what happens. Well, we get an init. If I refresh, see that flash? That page has to completely reinitialize before we see any data. There's no instant showing of data, okay? And then the actual page getting wired up first. What happens is we load the page, we normalize Blazor, we establish the WebSocket connection, and then we call our uh, on initialized async to get the data. All right, let's move on to WebAssembly. Okay, now I've got a basic Blazor WebAssembly hosted uh, solution here, and it's got to be a hosted app if you're going to do pre-rendering. Why? Because pre-rendering happens on the server. So you have to have a server for pre-rendering, okay? Now, that poses some interesting challenges that we will discover together. But let's take it one step at a time. This is going to be a non-pre-rendered, in other words, a standard WebAssembly application. And let's just take a look how it works. Um, first of all, though, I want to go to my weather forecast controller. And I want to just modify that a little bit. And the only thing I'm really doing here is just changing this so that it's going to generate 10 records instead of five. All right, so it's no big deal. Now, the other thing is I'm just going to, again, replace the code and markup in index with all the stuff that's in fetch data. So let's just run it. So if I refresh this, all right, even though it's cached and everything, it's still got to go get that data. And this is something that I think could really, really benefit from pre-rendering. Whereas on the server side, it's kind of subtle. You know what I mean? But the features that are in .NET 5, the new features for pre-rendering WebAssembly applications are really exciting because this is where you need it the most, right? Look at that. That's a big old blank screen for a couple of seconds while I refresh. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Now, while you were sleeping, I went and created a brand new WebAssembly application. This one I'm calling BT WASM PR because it is going to be pre-rendered. Now, the first thing that we have to do is go into the web root and just delete index HTML. Go ahead, just delete it. And now I'm going to add a razor page to the uh, server project in the pages folder. And that's right, we do have a pages folder for Razor Pages here. And that's going to be underscore host. So what we've got here in this underscore host is our component 
with the render mode set to web assembly pre-rendered and a component uh, type type of app. So this is a little bit different than what you saw in the last one. Now the next thing we have to do is add the tag helpers or else this won't work either. And we do that by adding a view imports razor page to the pages folder. And now in order to use this, I have to go into startup and change my fallback file from index.html to underscore host. Now that's the basic stuff. Let's just run this and see what happens. Hmm, nothing happening here. It's just a big blank screen. Let's take a look at the source. Uh, so you see this component? Right here, this we want to take precedence over app, but we're telling the client that app is going to come in here. And this is where we're telling the client. Right there. Builder roots component add app. Just take that line out of program CS. It's just the stuff you gotta do, kids. There it is, hello world. Counter, working good. Fetch data, working good. Now what happens when I refresh? Ooh, okay. So the pre-rendering worked fine, but when we tried to execute it from the client, we have a kind of a problem. So what we need is we need uh, a, a service on each side, on the client and on the server that implements a common interface to go and access the data. But on the client side, we're going to, just going to use an HTTP client to make that API call, whereas on the server side, we're going to actually return the data. Follow me? And then we're going to simplify the controller to just call into that service. So let's get started on that. I'm going to add an interface to my shared project. There it is, iWeather Forecast Service. And now I'm going to change my fetch data to instead of using HTTP client, we're going to use iWeather Forecast Service. So here we are, we're injecting iWeather Forecast Service instead of HTTP client. And then down here, we're calling Weather Forecast Service Get Forecast Async. All right, nice abstraction layer there. Now what we have to do is create an instance of that to run on the client and another instance to run on the server. So we're gonna use a data folder for this. Let's create a data folder on the client. And in there, we're going to add a weather forecast service class that implements the interface. Okay. So the only thing on the interface is get forecast async. So what we're going to do is on the client, we're going to use an HTTP client to make that call to the API. Now let's do the same on the server. Let's add a data folder and then add a class implementation to it. All right. So you can see that I've moved the memory cache in here and I've done all the caching and returning. All that stuff is being done in the service itself and I'm also returning 10 items. So now our weather forecast controller can really get simplified. Okay, we're injecting an iWeather forecast service into it, right? And then we're in the get, just using that to call get forecast async. Couldn't be simpler. Now, the next thing we have to do is add those services. So on the client side, that's in program CS. And on the server side, goes in startup. Now, this can be tricky. So when you put this in here, you're going to find iWeather Forecast Service, of course, in shared. But you have a choice between two weather forecast services, one in the client and one in the server. Make sure you choose the server one. Ask me how I know. Now, finally, we're going to move all that fetch data code into index, just like we did before. 
It's just the same code. Uh, except now, of course, we're using the iWeather Forecast service. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so did you see that? It loaded quickly, and then a few seconds later, uh, it loaded again. Now, watch this. Okay, so yes, it does flash, but look how instantaneously that first set of data comes down. Boom, it's like instant. Okay, now of course, you could use the virtualization techniques, you could use the lazy loading techniques. We've gone over all of these things. What I'm trying to do is show you how pre-rendering can speed up that first view uh, and especially, it's so important in WebAssembly that you don't get a flash, you know? Well, of course, your, your data redraws itself, but you do your caching right, it should be the same data. And let's face it, you're, you're going to be accessing a database anyway, right? Not some random number generator. So you shouldn't have to worry about caching uh, at that level. But... That is my demo. I hope you learned something. Back to you in the studio, Carl. Should you use pre-rendering? I can't tell you. Every app is different. You'll have to try these techniques for yourself. Hey, if your customers are delighted with the change, I guess it worked. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train.